Hello and welcome to At One With Animals Conversations to Inspire. I'm Janine O'Pame and this is part two of my conversation with Anthea Myberg. question I like to ask uh, the animal communicators that I interview um, which part of the animal do you feel that you are talking to when you're communicating with them that's a lovely question um, I feel I mean it's a heart-to-heart -heart connection that you connect and Adding more to that is that how, for me, I see the heart as this field around us, this satellite dish that sends this, this ripple of energy, in, which is our field. And we connect in our field with the field of the animal. Um, and, and through that process is how we able to gain the information and the insights and the feelings. So, it's the heart, but it almost feels bigger than that. Um, it's that, that whole energy field of the animal. Um, and if I think of, like sometimes I'll walk into work with a horse and I'll feel my heart will go cold or I'll feel something somewhere or sadness. And it's, I might not even have connected, but it's, it's that Am I walking into that field then, I, I guess, that, that energy field of what that animal is, mm. is, is emitting? So over my time with, with this journey, I've begun to see that the things that happen with me building up to a communication, what happens with my animals, often has relevance with the animal I'm about to speak with, particularly when it's mm. something out of order, like, out of my routine like if I suddenly get this urge to like super clean I mean they have an animal that's super clean and doesn't want to get dirty and I've learned to really trust that and and adding that into the what part do you connect with feels this is also relevant in that it's it's really mm -hmm. that morphic field that you connect in mm -hmm. so I think it's a lot bigger than just the heart and mm -hmm. that I, it's our heart field yeah, I mean, as winter has taught us that um, to connect with an animal, you need to have your, your heart needs to be open to the animal to be able to connect. So to connecting with love. Um, mm. But yeah, I like that because the way that you describe that as, you know, like a, I was visually seeing you walking towards the horse and, you know, we have more senses like, you know, our senses, but we have senses I'm sure that we we not so aware of and like picking up like the different types of intuition gut feeling and telepathy and you know so it's like you're walking into that field and there's all this information coming to all these different parts of, of mm. ourselves and and then interpreting that so this connection this heart connection and when our hearts are open um and that that feeling that that love connection like that unconditional love that a mother feels for a child or what we feel to one of our animals or partners and this this vibration of love is something i've been thinking about a lot um particularly in these times and and where there, there seems to be almost absence of it at times and um and how that love conquers all, but also that vibration of, of what it can really change. And the connection of, of speaking with animals or speaking with plants. And, and the question that I found myself pondering is, so this is just really speaking earth. And we, we, we just learn in the language of earth and how this 
planet has been created through love. Um, and it's not the mushy kebe kind of stuff. I mean, love isn't necessarily uh, all fuzzy and red valentines. There's a, there's a strength in it um, when it's authentic. And, um, and, and that feels like what we're going through now is that really being called up to learn that speaking earth and connecting with the heart, which is our, our true voice. That's a really beautiful way of, uh, of talking about it. I love that. And um, so thank you for, for sharing that and, um, and giving us the visual. Um, and so I just want to uh, sort of change gears um, a bit because I know that this has been a, a tough time for you personally um, because of being in the tourism industry for 27 years. Uh, in South Africa and of course you know, the pandemic hits and so I know that um, there's been some major changes in your life around that so can you talk about that and how you have you developed your business your you know your other work and and how that's going thank you yeah yeah no it's been a, an interesting time um since about 2018, I, I was getting these messages that I, I really had to step up and move away from tourism. Um, and I couldn't figure out how. It was the, the security and the comfort of what I knew. Um, I, I enjoyed my work and I hated my work at the same time, the, the stress and the pressures. And, and it was getting to the point that I was getting more and more difficult clients um, <laughs> and more challenges. And so that pressure was building up and knowing that this wasn't serving me anymore. I had a history of stress-related illnesses and, um, and things that I, I, and I was doing the animal communication already part-time and sort of starting to play with the constellation work. And it felt like I had to sort of find the other part of me to do the other part of the work because they're just in such conflict of each other in the sense of the space and the energy that's, that's used almost. So in many ways, the, the pandemic hit in. I, I remember being quite relieved for, for a couple of months that, oh, my God, thank God, this is the solution that I needed to, <laughs> to move away from all that thinking of, yeah, but how am I going to support myself? And, you know, the, the stories that you get told that you you can't make a living doing what you love and, um, you know, this is, this is blah, 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 and all the rest. And um, having the comfort of savings to, to sort of, I guess, give me the time to really work through it and, um, and realize the realities of, of what was happening. And at the same time, that pressure that I had to step up and do more and start to say, I mean, a lot of my work is quite alternative and not very mainstream um so so having to step out and really say all these things that I'm doing and and realizing that I had in a way um made myself a little bit safe or a lot safe by by you know I do animal communication I do a bit of these other things but not really giving the full package and and not in a dishonest way but just more in that that fear of being judged um and mm. it it's been one hell of a process to to step beyond those fears of judgments and realizing through <laughs> through experience and um and things happening that um you're going to get judged anyway and mm. i may as well just get judged doing what feels right and there's this pressure that's built up inside and mm. even feeling the animals and really sort of giving me those extra challenges and um and when I there's the times when it's like okay this is really hard maybe I need to go and get another job and the the outside noise is also telling you that um and because that's the logical thing to do and it's the safe mm -hmm. thing to do and when I sit and I really connect with my heart and I ask that question it feels like it turns into a raisin and it's just like then I can forget like the past couple of months and years that I've been going through because I I think I know that if if I don't just keep 
with the pushing and trusting that um, that it's not going to serve me making myself comfortable and that I mean Rumi talks about the to be the light you've got to burn and um, it's feeling the burn and mm. and still showing up um, learning your tribe I mean the times that we've shared support because it can be a lonely journey and asking the animals um, winters always said it through our training also it's always ask the animals and I asked my animals and just collectively out there, it's okay, right, I'm showing up, I'm ready to serve, I'm wanting to serve, mm -hmm. so to show me. Mm -hmm. And if this is not the right path, then show me that too. And mm -hmm. there's been too many things that have been like out of sync that confirm, um, especially when I'm really doubting, that it's just to kind of push on a little bit Mm -hmm. and um and the animals mostly um I mean like even in my workshops I'm like okay so I've got to do this and um you know not having the biggest world's biggest advertising budget it's okay guys we we're doing this workshop we need people you got to help and people will say that Genevieve the, the horse behind me in the picture came to them in their dreams or they saw her on one of my Instagram posts or or something um and and just really there's been too many things in that way to to not listen mm. so I guess there's the the likeliness that I came to a couple of months ago was a little bit like you know when you're the new kid on the block and you the new kid at school or work you've got to go through a bit of a challenge mm. and to really show that you want to be part of this and and really mm. like that your heart is really in the right place mm -hmm. and it feels like that's been a lot of the process too is is testing mm -hmm. um and when when you think okay I can't do this anymore and then you hear another story of somebody else that's been through this and pushed through and mm -hmm. um and then every time pushing a little bit more everything just shows you that yeah this is right and mm -hmm. the right people coming into your path all the animals mm. um, at the right at these right times mm. and finding that grace and humility of of it not always being in the timing that my head says or the debit order cycle says or whatever but in in a way in that bigger picture it's it's all it's all in the right time mm. and and learning to really trust that um, mm. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's not always as clean as we would like, and uh, yeah, I I appreciate the the messiness of it. Um, and I use the fear, or the fear that sometimes rises. You know, the panic of uh, where's the money going to come from to actually push myself to. I, you know, I don't say I don't really need to push myself to do the interviews or to do astrology readings, but I it's pushing my, myself through the procrastination. Uh, the, the times when I will just sit there and, uh, you know, panic and it's like, well, I know I'm not doing any good doing, you know, panicking. I'm going to push myself. This is going to push me into action. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, there's the bark flower remedies. <laughs> <laughs> I got a whole box of them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Within arms reach. <laughs> <laughs> Can you elaborate just a little bit? You said that um, you know you ask the universe, you acknowledge and express you want to be of service, and yeah, perhaps give and a couple of experiences where you've asked for help or you've you know said if you want me to do this, and then you've what has happened like some examples of what has happened and how you've been helped in those unusual or synchronous ways yeah yeah absolutely um i i i i use nature as my signposts um and something that just on a side i always see we, we live in this world where we look at signs and posts and road road posts and things and they're always the same 
and it always say that you're going left to the airport or whatever it may be mm -hmm. but nature is just so creative and so ever evolving and I find the the when I'm when I hit a low um a while back I I, I really hit a low with you know sort of what 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 am I meant to do? Am I meant to be getting the job? And you know, am I meant to be doing this? And you know, the whole thing. And um, and yeah, threw my toys out a little bit at the universe, just with you know, this is this is getting hard. And within that time, I'd had three different messages, which were a mixture of someone asking me to come and see their horse to friends connecting and just saying that they're thinking of me and sending lots of love and that was like wow okay thank you all right I, I get this and 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 then the universe just put on a little extra show and um I'd walked outside in the afternoon and there were these birds that were beautiful and colorful and I didn't recognize them and I sort of sent this feeling out with who are you and what are you and they came closer and they were bee eaters now for anyone that uh, you get the European bee eater. So it's the, these beautiful sort of sea green birds that have got different colors here. And, and in Australia, they're actually called the rainbow birds. Mm -hmm. And I, I did reference in, you know, what is this whole meaning? And part of it was them sort of when they show up, it's a confirmation that you're on the right path. And I couldn't have asked for a better message. Um, and then also, there was four of them, which felt like it was from the four directions, which I work with as well. Um, and there was just so much inside. I don't really have that many words for everything, but it was just that, okay, thank you. I, mm -hmm. you've, you've heard me and I feel seen and, mm -hmm. um, and that I can do this mm -hmm. and um, that, that you are here. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's the confirmation and the gives you fuel to keep going. It does. It doesn't mean that um, you're going to win the lotto tomorrow or whatever, or, you know. You can try. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> but, but it does just, um, it really does help to to sort of like, hey, it's okay. It, mm. We've got you. We've and, got you. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll see. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll I often when I find my attention drawn to to sort of I mean there was a conversation with somebody once at a tough time and I, I drove behind a vehicle and on the vehicle it said limitless mm -hmm. and I mean yeah it, like those kind of things and and not dismissing them it's like okay thank you I hear that mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. you know maybe maybe there can be judgment on oh well you know that's a fruit loop but you know at the end of the day um uh, this world is so crazy and mixed up and there's so much magic around there and um we've got to we've got to believe in something and, mm. and i really do believe that that this work hasn't my journey hasn't been a coincidence um reflecting over the pandemic time during lockdown I, taking like since 2012 when I really stepped up and started this journey I realized that um, had I mapped out my plan of what I'm going to do to where I am now it couldn't have been more perfectly orchestrated than what the, the journey is that I did and and yet so much of that journey my, my focus had been to to become this professional animal communicator and that was 2017 that I finished that but these other things came in um, as we've spoken about before and everything feels like it just came into this funnel of, of, um, of what I'm doing now. And I mean, I'm an, I'm, I do see myself as this eternal student. I'm, I'm still learning and doing other courses and, and training and just that thirst to, to want to understand more and offer more and, where I feel guided and and it does feel that the animals particularly the horses are in north um, mm. and when they show up I mean a couple of months ago at six months ago I, I work with the crystals a lot and it was that you've, you've got to start selling them too and getting them out to the people mm. and I had a lot of resistance with that um, for many reasons and saying like, no but that isn't the path that, that wasn't what mm. I wanted to do mm. 
And anyway, I went and did that. And when I walked into the wholesaler, the first thing that caught my eye was this incredible Labradorite um, horse head. Mm -hmm. And needless to say, they shared a whole lot of other horses that they had um, kept away because they're quite expensive. But mm -hmm. again, it was just that, okay, right, I'm being shown that this is right and that feeling inside, and even though it doesn't make sense, um, mm -hmm. it's that having to trust it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just to keep trusting. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and I think I just wanted to say about, you know, the people who think who think things about the kind of work that we're doing and, you know, that's about them and not about us. And I know that we do tend to take things personally and we feel like, you know, and, and I think that's just a kind of defensive reaction. Um, I think that we get, you know, we're going to get people who who. Uh, think what we're doing is crazy and then we're going to get people who uh, think what we're doing is amazing I've overcome that one a long time ago yeah. I, think. Um, yeah. that... I think you have to or you know you don't have to I think it's healthy to um, to work on that especially if it is a fear that comes up it holds um, one back otherwise from really being able to be in service yeah. um, when when there's that doubt I mean the animals feel it um, it's it's, mm. it's something that that then we we don't open ourselves up to the full potential of what it is we we stepping into mm. Uh, mm. when when people say that I'm weird I it's like a badge of honor I love it yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I I feel exactly the same. And <laughs> and and stepping away from like being being comfortable in that discomfort of mm. um of not doing something mainstream. And particularly now where where it's that challenge of yeah, but you know, get a job or or whatever. And it's it's mm. it, it is or absolutely perfect as it is mm. in all its messiness um, mm. that every day there's new opportunities that show up and things that could could never have been if there wasn't the space for it mm. uh, and we 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 catch ourselves in such this busy busy sort of do 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 but mm. we forget and to really step back sometimes and allow and and a lot of this reinventing process um, has been that finding the balance between obviously showing up and doing but also stepping back a little bit sometimes and and trusting that things are going to happen and um, not doing it like are we there yet you know it's mm -hmm. that it's that just keep on the message that always comes to me is just keep showing up like you say it as well in our conversations and it's mm. that keep showing up but that's that keep doing and not doing with looking at the bank account because oh my goodness it's, it's just doing the best you can and the rest falls into place mm. and I know when I'm really in the flow with that that's exactly what happens mm. when I'm doubting and I'm fearful mm. then it gets messy mm. and then having to to get back and my dog shows me <laughs> that. yeah yeah oh well thank you for sharing all of that and um I just wanted to ask uh sort of what you're doing now and um how people can contact you so at the moment I'm doing a whole lot of different things and animal communication is 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 always the the one who came first um, so I do many remote communications and I also do house calls or stable yards with the horses in the Winelands and Helderberg and Greater Cape Town areas. Um, I work a lot with the horses with the fascia energy healing. Um, so I work with rehabilitation horses and also dogs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes cats, um, they, they generally are their, their own good healers, but sometimes they do need a little bit extra. And I work with people too. Um, and in the constellation work, um, predominantly with the horses, whether it's a, it's a private consultation or, or a workshop, 
I hold monthly workshops with the horses and art. Um, that's always over the full of the new moon time. Mm. And I am busy working on um, some programs to put online. I, I've had quite a few clients asking mm. me to to develop, um, you know, to to do to hold the workshops online, which I, I, I am just busy putting it all together for that. And I've put together now a mentorship program um, for people, a one-on-one, -on -one, where it often comes up when after a communication, they've, they've been really touched by what the animal has shared, and then they want to take it deeper. And just through that call, I've, I've put together a program, whether it's a three or six months, um, where we work online or in person, um, encouraging that bringing in nature and connection um i've always wanted to work in these open spaces and i mean i'd rather sit and have a session on the beach just working in the elements of nature and mm. awakening more than just the well, the sharing it's the senses and it's the connection and um, and that that feels like a lot more of what i would like to and possibly am going to be doing um, as I'm guided. Mm. Mm. Um, and so how how can people find out what you're what you're doing? Like if what uh, workshops you have coming up and that sort of thing. Are they on your website? They are. So my website's ubuntuhealing.com. Mm, you can put that in the description as well of the video. Okay. Mm. Thank you. So on my website as well as on Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um or they can just contact me and, and ask um, what's going on. I do also do infrequent monthly newsletters. So that's always a good space to, to be updated um, mm. as well. Say infrequent monthly newsletters. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but like the weather, we can't tie ourselves exactly to a day. <laughs> no. Our life's too unpredictable in that sense. But yeah. Yeah. So, so infrequently frequent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much. It's been really thank wonderful. I've, I've learned, you know, I didn't know about the, the orders of love and the morphic field. And so I really appreciate you, you know, taking the time to explain those things. So to so me and Maya <laughs> would like to thank you very much for um for sharing today it's been really lovely and i of course wish you all the best with your with your business and i you know i wholeheartedly mean this when i say that you are one of the most gifted people i know you know working with animals uh, and people are lucky to have you work with with their animals thank you thank you so much and thank you for the time and the opportunity to share and and, and for all your wonderful questions that um, sort of allow to bring the stories across i really appreciate it and the work that you do and that you're doing for for the animals and for the lions um, so thank you i hope you have enjoyed this conversation as always, these conversations are in collaboration with Animal Talk Africa and the Global White Lion Protection Trust. I'll include Anthea's website address and email address for you to make contact and you can subscribe to her newsletter. If you'd like to support my work, I have included my website here and also a couple of places where you can donate to and 50% of any donations will be shared with the White Lions. Thank you.